world and state media concepts social media podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple, it's simple, such a sad song. Tuning in to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Hey there, I'm your host, Kayla Moeller. This has been kind of a tough week. Um, I think quarantine has really taken a toll on me. I turned my phone off the last few days, and the only reason I turned it on was to sift through social media to find content for this. So, with that being said, I kind of want to to take a second to talk about mental health in general, but also mental health in the wake of coronavirus, especially because May is Mental Health Awareness Month in the United States. So to start out, if you just Google mental health awareness or something of the like, a list pops up from the CDC right away without having to click on anything. Um, And it's titled... Be kind to your mind. And it lists five things. And number one is pause, breathe, notice how you feel. Number two is take breaks from COVID-19 content. Number three, make time to sleep and exercise more. Number four, reach out and stay connected. And Number five, seek help if overwhelmed or unsafe. And while all of those things are very important, I think the most important is number two, taking a break from coronavirus content. Taking a break from it also means taking a break from everything online, because right now, everything online is about coronavirus. There's really not much else to talk about, obviously, because it's killing people every day but also because it's affecting every single person on Earth's daily life. Entertainers, sports, music, concerts, art shows, films, you name it. All of those things are put on hold, and therefore, so is its content. All of the content that would come out of those things isn't there. And I work really hard to make my podcast interesting and informing, but it's definitely a struggle right now because I just see the same stuff over and over again. There's not anything new, really. And I think us as human beings, especially in today's technological age, we thirst for for new things, new knowledge, new something. And we're just not getting that right now. So that longing for new ideas on top of the death and destruction and looming uncertainty is really hard for everyone right now and you can keep hitting refresh on your social media pages and it's really just the same stuff over and over and we're not used to that and what the stuff is over and over is just terrible awful things in the news so it's it's really hard to read all of that because you feel kind of helpless like you like you can't do anything about it um and then If it's not death and destruction and illness and fear, then you go on Instagram and it's all these model girls with thick thighs and huge butts and flat stomachs and they're right in your face while you're sitting on the couch gaining weight because you can't really do much else right now. It doesn't feel good. And we all want validation and reassurance. It's a normal human desire. And... We're not really hanging out with our friends, our peers, our coworkers, all of that. And usually we kind of just normal day-to-day human interaction, we kind of 
get those things. But we're feeling very isolated and alone right now and scared. And I have an empathy problem for sure. I am way, way, way too empathetic. And it causes me some distress sometimes. Uh, If I read like a horrible story about someone across the world, I will think of them for days. Um, And in some part, I think that's why I chose a career in journalism. It's my way of connecting people and understanding them and their stories and sharing it with everyone else. But it can be a lot sometimes. My internships were tough. I saw death and accidents and devastated family members, and it would really break my heart. And as a journalist, I think it's really important to have a balance in order to do a really good job. I know journalists who have completely turned off their emotion in order to get the job done, and I do not think that's a good way to go about things. You need to have a certain level of empathy to connect to people and share intimate moments with them to make them feel comfortable and heard. But you also can't be too empathetic like me because it gets in the way. And it's something I need to work on. I tend to put my empathy before the job and that's not good either because I still, I have a job to do and if I don't do my job right, then a must needed story that the people need to hear might not ever come to light. And there's a perfect balance in journalism, and I might go my entire life trying to find it. I have a favorite journalist. His name is Frank Somerville on KTVU in Oakland. And I think he is a perfect example of the journalist I'm striving to be. He is kind and relatable, yet professional. He welcomes criticism and ideas that he doesn't agree with. He takes the time to listen with a sense of genuineness, but still creates a story that connects people. And to me, I think he's the closest person I've seen to have that perfect balance, and I respect him a lot. Um, I, I, I just think that he really gets it. He, he gets the people, and he also gets the job. He has this great way of meshing the two together perfectly. Okay, but back to mental health now. I just wanted to say it's very normal to have off days or an off week or heck, even an off month. It's a part of being human and I have to remind myself that as well. It's frustrating and annoying when these celebrities are in our face saying, we're all in this together. It's a nice message and a nice thought, but they are not going to understand what you're going through I'm not going to understand what you're going through. Only you do. And your thoughts and emotions are 100% valid. Whether you're just a normal guy or gal sitting in the house doing nothing or a heroic frontline worker in the face of sickness every day, anything you're thinking or feeling is a okay. If I'm feeling down, I try to get outside, but sometimes that doesn't always work. So find something that's right for you. I hate it. I hate it when people are, are like, just be productive. You'll you'll feel better. Just go for a walk. Do some push-ups. Maybe that works for them, and that's great. But it might not work for you. So find your balance. Don't shut down your empathy, but don't overdo it. Find a balance and find an activity or a way of thinking that works for you. Don't be afraid to try new things. Even if it's something as little as cutting your sandwich a different way. If you're not feeling like yourself and you want advice or maybe you know someone who has been acting a little off lately, then I encourage you to reach out to mentalhealth.gov for more information. Or to be supportive during Mental Health Awareness Month, you can check out the National Alliance on Mental Health website, nami.org, to get involved. Okay, and then after the break, I'm going to move into relationships. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. 
Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. On the topic of mental health during the pandemic and Mental Health Awareness Month, I also want to touch on domestic violence. We have a problem with domestic violence, and it has been on the rise since being stuck at home. A common tactic of domestic violence is the abuser forcing social isolation, and this pandemic has made it incredibly easy for that to happen. And now we see both social isolation and physical isolation. We've seen a rise in firearm sales as well, and this doesn't fare well for domestic violence victims with nowhere to go. Of course, not all firearm people are doing that, but there are some people out there that are going to reap the repercussions from this. And think about people who were trying to muster up the courage to get out, find a way out, do something, and now they're forced to postpone their escape and are feeling hopeless. Or people who haven't experienced domestic violence from their partner in the past, but now this is the perfect storm for it to come out and start happening. If you are feeling unsafe, you can call 1-800-799-SAFE. And if it's unsafe for you to make a phone call, then you can head to thehotline.org for chat services or more help. And if it's extreme and you're unsafe in both of those situations, then you can go on Twitter or Instagram and you can DM me your favorite flower and I will understand and I will do my best to help you out. And okay, maybe... You and your partner aren't abusing each other per se, but maybe you're getting real sick of each other being cooped up together day in and day out. After China's lockdown, uh, they saw a huge uptick in divorce filings. So let's try to prevent that from happening here. You love each other, remember? So let's talk about what to do to keep your relationship going healthy and strong during lockdown. After seeing an abundance of posts and articles shared online about 
COVID dating and keeping the fire alive, I did some research and found a bunch of stuff from relationship experts and marriage counselors, so I'm going to kind of sum up my findings for you and break it down. The biggest thing you can do is take time for yourself, and I mean absolute solitude, away and out of sight from your partner. This will allow you both to be alone with your thoughts so you can realize what your feelings are and what your needs are. You can also just take this time to think about nothing. Just be there for yourself and cater to your own self, totally separate from your partner. Then, once you both are ready, you can come together and spend silent time with one another, or you can come together and talk about your needs from your partner and discuss a definitive plan of action that works for both of you. And don't get offended when your partner wants alone time or doesn't feel like talking. Respect their boundaries as they should respect yours. If you don't feel like verbal communication one day, that's totally fine. Maybe try texting each other instead. It's always good to have a plan, though, and if something is pressing you, don't be angry or upset. Try to calmly explain to your partner what you need and put an emphasis uh, of appreciating them and them being understanding for your needs. And also, don't be passive-aggressive or expect them to know what you need. Yes, they're your partner and know you very well, but this is a very confusing time, and there's no time for assumptions. Be active. Okay, and now for the fun stuff. So I've seen people getting extremely creative on social media with date nights. Um, People on Twitter are talking about all these fun things that their partners have done for them and surprise them with. Uh, And it seems like people are really going above and beyond, which is fun. Uh, And it's fun for you because it gives you a goal and something to put your mind to and the satisfaction of doing something for someone you love. And then it's also fun for your partner because they will feel seen, appreciated, and loved. And it can be something simple like a candlelit dinner in the backyard where you invite your partner to get all dressed up. And I saw one man who printed a three-course meal menu complete with like a mini wine list to put on the table to give it more of a restaurant feel and go an extra step. And another idea I saw was a movie night where one partner created a concessions stand and made like a menu and on it, it read popcorn, $50, soda, $100, candy, $200. And the other partner had to go up and pretend order what they wanted, which was cute and also added a little bit of humor because obviously concession stand prices are are outrageous. And then in the next room was another sign that had a list of a couple different movies that they had in the house and some times, and the partner got to pick which one they wanted to see. So it gave the feel of a movie theater. And it it didn't really cost money, just effort in the sign makings and also having popcorn and soda on hand. And another idea I saw was having a drive-in movie night in the driveway. You can get creative with this in a number of ways, like... Maybe if you have like a projector and a white sheet, you could hang that up on the garage. But the most simple is to just take a laptop into the car, put the seats down and set up pillows and blankets and snuggle up and watch a movie in the car. And for a daytime excursion, you could have a picnic in the house or in the yard, or you could pick out really goofy outfits for each other and have a little photo shoot around the house. Uh, Most of these I saw on Twitter and some I came up with myself, but those should get the juices flowing for a unique idea to make your partner happy. Uh, And so you can also have a nice evening with each other and do something different. Up next, I'm going to talk about a giant graduation ceremony for the class of 2020. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco, ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. 
they make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hi, welcome back. I was just talking about ways to keep your relationship thriving during lockdown and some date night ideas that are creative and fun to do around the house. My next topic is about a giant graduation ceremony for 2020 grads who might not get to experience their own graduation with their peers. President Barack Obama will be delivering a primetime televised commencement address for the class of 2020 that will be airing on May 16th. The event will be an hour long, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific time. He sent out a tweet about it, saying, I've always loved joining commencements, the culmination of years of hard work and sacrifice. Even if we can't get together in person this year, Michelle and I are excited to celebrate the nationwide class of 2020 and recognize this milestone with you and your loved ones. End of tweet. And then attached is a photo of timing and information, including an event called Show Me Your Walk, HBCU edition, also on May 16th, but starting at 11 a.m. Pacific time, and also a an event, Dear Class of 2020, commencement address later on in June. Uh, but this particular event that I'm talking about, it's called uh, Graduate Together. It's the one that's scheduled for 5 o'clock on May 16th. It's going to be airing on CBS, ABC, NBC, and Fox. There are going to be some special guests, including LeBron James, the Jonas Brothers, Bad Bunny, and more. The event is hosted by XQ Institute, the LeBron James Family Foundation, and the Entertainment Industry Foundation. And the CEO of XQ Institute, Ruslan Ali, gave a statement saying, quote, This high school graduation season will be anything but ordinary. But that's all the more reason why the class of 2020 deserves extraordinary advice, heartfelt encouragement, and hard-won wisdom about facing new challenges in an uncertain world, end quote. And I think she really hit the nail on the head with that. 
Uh, in addition to Obama, another person gave some advice to the graduating class of 2020, Bill Gates, with the help of his wife, Melinda. In a message which first appeared in the Wall Street Journal, they said, quote, you can always use your voice and your vote to advance change. You can insist on policies that create a healthier, better future for everyone, everywhere, whether they live down the street or the, on the other side of the planet, end quote. And they encouraged them to remember that the world has rebuilt after war and vanquished smallpox. And they ended by saying, quote, with your leadership, the world will be stronger than before, end quote. So that's nice. It's great that these huge public figures are acknowledging these students who are probably feeling cheated. I just missed all of this myself. This could have been me. And I really feel for the 2020 graduates. It must feel like all their hard work came and gone in the blink of an eye. There, there's nothing substantial to grab onto it. And it just kind of ended and that's it. Like uh, my friends who are graduating have been posting to their social medias saying, well, I just had my last class. I just ended the Zoom session and started crying. And that is kind of sad. There's no, there's nothing to hold on to. They just ended an online class session and then that was it. They're just sitting in their house and they're like, well, that it's just kind of sad. I, I'm trying to put myself in their position and yeah, there's just, just nothing substantial about that. But let's talk about the positives now. What are the good things that have come out of this pandemic? What are some things we have discovered that we may want to to stay here after lockdown? Well, the Los Angeles Times wrote an article about what they want to stay, and then it turned into a Twitter trend. And in this article, it lists 12 things that we might hope to stay, and they are as follows. Number one, the wildlife taking over. Number two, takeout drinks. Number three, fancy restaurants having a to-go and reheat at home option. Number four, feeling a part of your community. Number five, DJ D-Nice and his Instagram dance parties. Number six, people leaving gifts on the doorstep. Number seven, browsing the bookshelf. Number eight, keeping connected with strangers. Number nine, chalk art and messages of hope. Number 10, neighborhood parks getting love. 11, more talking, less texting. And 12, making noise. And I think they meant like music and going out and sitting on the porch with your guitar or something like that. And I think those things are beautiful. And this pandemic, as horrible and death-ridden that it's been, has really made us stop and smell the roses. It slowed us down. It's allowed us time to ourselves but also perhaps too much time to ourselves that we are not used to. So that's why I'm trying to emphasize the importance of trying new things and finding things that work for us as individuals. And what out of this pandemic do you hope to keep around in your routine? For me, it's sitting outside. Not necessarily doing anything, but just sitting outside and enjoying the fresh air. I thought I was outside a lot before, which I was, but I was usually doing something like hiking or going somewhere with my friends. But I don't mean that. I mean just sitting outside and literally doing nothing, or sitting outside and doing my work out there, or talking on the phone outside. I, I've just, I've really enjoyed that, and I'm, I think I'm going to definitely keep doing that after this is over. And I also want to take some time to recognize that it's Nurse Appreciation Week. I'm sitting here at my house doing my podcast and reading about the virus, and they are running around the hospitals treating the virus. They're taking the brunt of it. They are exhausted. They are trying their best and giving everything they can and more. If you're a nurse, thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart. I am doing my best to do my part for people like you. And if you know a nurse, please be sure to thank them this week and every week, but especially this week. Maybe give them a little gift card or something as a token of your appreciation. They do all the dirty work. Doctors are great and wonderful too, but the doctors wouldn't be able to do it without the nurses. They are for sure the backbone. They get to know their patients. They spend time with their patients. They hold their hands and feed them food. So to all the nurses out there, your hard work does not go unnoticed. 
You rock, you're rad, and thank you truly. Happy Nurses Week. Okay, and up next, I'm going to talk about meat plants. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. I just talked about the graduation ceremony on May 16th, where President Obama will be giving a speech. And then I touched on the positives of of the pandemic and what we might like to see stick around after the lockdown lifts. So next up, where's the beef? That's the question I keep seeing float around Twitter, and it's directed at popular fast food chain Wendy's. Locations in California, South Carolina, and Kentucky have taken hamburger and beef options off of their menu due to a meat shortage amid the pandemic. They're still selling chicken and side items. Wendy said in a statement, quote, some of our menu items may be in short supply from time to time at some restaurants in this current environment. We expect this to be temporary and we're working diligently to minimize the impact to our customers and restaurants, end quote. And Twitter user at Amber Lino tweeted a photo at a Wendy's drive-thru with a handwritten note on the menu that says, We are terribly sorry for the inconvenience. We are currently experiencing issues with our meat processing supplier and are unable to serve beef products. We are happy to serve chicken and side items. Thank you. So she just pulled up to wendy's and to order something in the drive-thru and that was stuck on the menu so she was like what the heck and the meat industry has taken a hard hit because of all of this and as of april 28th at least 22 meat packing and processing plants have closed over just the last two months because of the virus and it's predicted more are to close here pretty soon and We're starting to see the effects of it in public now for the first time with Wendy's. It's been there. We just haven't really seen it right in our face until now. And the workers at these meatpacking plants, they work in super close quarters side by side. And a lot of them have been getting sick from the virus. And it's easily spread through these plants because of their close proximity. And with most of these employees sick, No one can work them, so they're having to shut down. And industry experts are warning that as long as the pandemic lingers, that's how long we'll have challenges with our meat supply chain. The head of the Food Processing, Packing, and Manufacturing Division of the United Food and Commercial Workers, geez, (laughs) Mark Lauritsen, said, quote, During this time of COVID-19, we have to... To spread people out. And if we spread people out, that means less production. If we don't do it, we're just going to continue in this cycle of a plant running at half speed for two weeks and then having to close down for two weeks. End quote. He's encouraging the government to expand workers' access to rapid testing and uh, accelerate production of masks for them if they want to strengthen the food supply chain. And he was also quoted saying, Until the world gets its arms around coronavirus, this is the model we're going to have to work under. 
or we're going to have to sacrifice these humans for the sake of a cheeseburger, end quote. So yeah, good for him for saying that. And America consumes a lot of meat and beef especially, but it's just dangerous because it can start with that. And yes, we can survive without beef, but it could trickle down the food chain, you know? Uh, but some factories have started to open back up with safer measures like temperature checks and working at social distances instead of being side by side lined up. So it's slower because there, there's not as many people in there getting it done, but at least they're safe. Um, and I would love to say, okay, that's it. Let's just open back up. We're, we're kind of getting the repercussions here in our food chain, but that, that's a very irresponsible decision. People's lives are at stake. And you know what's also terrible for the economy? Uh, tons of people dying. So either way, our economy is in the gutter. But I'd rather it be in the gutter without people dying. And as long as you have your health, I believe that you can figure out the rest. Being healthy is such a blessing. But without your health, then what do you have? How are you going to go to work then? If you're sick and dying, work is going to be the last thing you want to think about anyways. And a huge clothing retailer, J. Crew, just recently filed for bankruptcy. However, a company filing for bankruptcy doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to go out of business. Uh, so J. Crew is expecting to keep running day-to-day -day operations, and they're expecting to come out of this as a profitable company. And big companies like J. Crew, who do file for bankruptcy, usually do it as a way to get rid of things they can't afford, like wipe away their debts and uh, also close down locations where they're losing money and not seeing a profit. They use it as kind of a, a cleanup, get your ish together kind of thing. And what's interesting is that these locations that close down usually have a big blowout sale to liquidate any inventory and to get some quick cash so the clothes and products don't go to waste. But with coronavirus, that can't really happen. And if there are some of these sales going on at their locations around the country that are open, then a lot of people are going to be hesitant to go out to them. So they're definitely going to be losing a lot of money either way. And a lot of these locations are just going to close outright instead of having any sort of last minute sale to ramp up some cash. But that's just the reality of things now. And it's horrible. And our economy is totally, ugh, it's, it's, it's bad, people. It's going to be bad. It's bad right now. And it's probably just going to get worse. But it, at the same time, it's still going to be horrible and bad if a bunch of people die. Either way, it's bad. So I'd rather it be bad with people still alive. Um, all right, up next, let's talk about a guy who tried to live out a Disney fairy tale, quite literally. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. was just talking about some interruptions in our meat supply chain due to the pandemic. Oh my gosh, I feel like everything I say is followed with due to the pandemic. And I also talked about clothing retailer J. Crew filing for bankruptcy. Now let's talk about a man who quite literally tried to live in a Disney world. Florida deputies arrested a man who was living on a retired island in Disney World who told them it was like living in a tropical paradise. He was seen using a company boat 
by a staff member who then called authorities and then they came and they all called over a loudspeaker asking the man to come out and leave. And the man claims he didn't hear any of those attempts. And who knows, maybe he didn't since the island is retired. Maybe the loudspeakers don't reach over there. But either way, there are several no trespassing signs that the man disregarded. And obviously it's common sense that you can't just inhabit an island in Disney World. And he planned to stay like a week or so or, or as long as he could. In time of quarantine, anything goes, I guess, according to this man. And what I find hilarious is the guy just, he just helped himself to one of their company boats sailing around. Like, how did he get to the island in the first place? Was it on the boat? How long had he been there? He could be, he could be lying. Like, what if he was there for a month and they just caught him now? Um, and if he had never used the boat and been seen, could he have still been there right now and no one would know? Like, what was he eating? <laughs> I wish I could talk to the guy. He, he sounds like a legend. It's an 11 acre island, so it's pretty big. So I bet if he were smarter about it, he definitely could have gotten away with it. It's completely overrun with nature, but a lot of buildings and things are still there. And I think it would have been possible with some more planning, but it kind of seems like the guy just went out on a whim and just decided to go for it. And once authorities found him, he was taken into custody with no issues. He didn't run or resist or anything and he claims he didn't hear anybody calling him over the loudspeakers because he was taking a nap <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> um but yeah so that 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 was a pretty crazy story i couldn't i couldn't even believe it when i saw it i was like oh my gosh this guy was literally trying to live in a disney world uh okay and now let's talk about babies cnn anchor anderson cooper is now a father via surrogate uh the baby is a boy and his name is wyatt He's about a week and a half old and is doing well. And Cooper plans to co-parent with his ex, Benjamin Masoni. And what's cute is that Andy Cohen has totally been helping Cooper out with all this baby stuff. Because Cohen became a father in February, also via surrogate. So they kind of, he, he, I mean, while he's still new about it, he's maybe like three months ahead. Um, and Cohen has been passing down outgrown baby clothes to Cooper and his nanny even left to give Cooper a hand and help get his new baby on a sleep schedule. So that's pretty special that they are going through the same thing and experiencing new fatherhood at the same time. And another baby who just arrived is... <laughs> It's Elon Musk and his girlfriend Grimes' baby. The couple named their child, uh, uh, <laughs> how do I put this? Okay, well, okay, the kid's name is X-A-E-A-12. -A -A and apparently it's pronounced X-Ash Archangel 12, I think. I don't know, I'm confused myself. But... The references are this. The X represents the unknown variable of mathematics. The weird AE symbol, because it's not just AE, it's like a mushed together AE. Um, it's Elvin for love and or artificial intelligence. And I had to look up what Elvin is, and it's basically elf language. And then A12 represents an aircraft and also a song Grimes likes. I, I, I'm really, um, I'm really trying to think of something nice to say, but I can't, so I'm just not going to say anything. But I will move into the memes. <laughs> first of all, the first photo Elon shared of his new son, he put a filter over the little baby's face of face tattoos on the baby, including a tattoo of the word savage right underneath the baby's eye. It's kind of odd, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again, Elon is an odd guy. And his girlfriend, Grimes, she's a Canadian singer. They've been together since 2018. Uh, and, and Elon has, like, 20 other kids. Okay, not 20. He has, he has seven children. But still, oh my gosh, seven kids? Good thing he's rich. 
Uh, but the memes about this baby's name are through the roof. I have been laughing out loud when I see them. They, they are, I, they've been making me laugh so hard. So people are like, okay, X, go play with the other kids. And X is like, okay, dad. And then it's a video of a bunch of little kids running around screaming. And then this alien figure is like chasing all the kids. <laughs> or another one is, is X says, Zero 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 one 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 zero one one zero one one one, and everyone is like, "Huh? What did he say?" And then Elon is like, "Oh, that means he's hungry." <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! And then um, there's a TikTok going around that these two boys made, and it's them pretending to be Elon and X having a heart to heart. And every time one of them opens their mouth, it's just the emergency warning system sound. <laughs> it's like, <"Wah!" laughs> every time one of them opens their mouth, that's so funny. And then I've seen more where it's just like robot noises every time someone opens their mouth and they're pretending to be the baby. And I've also seen um, some where it's like, Elon is like, okay, X, it's time to go to sleep now. And then it's a picture of someone plugging into a wall. <laughs> The list goes on. They're absolutely hilarious, so go check them out. People are really creative. And while we're on the topic of artificial intelligence stuff, artificially intelligent music is starting to become so good, it might start causing legal troubles. There's a trend on Twitter highlighting AI music or deep fake music. So basically a bunch of algorithms analyze a vast amount of an artist's songs and find patterns in audio data and then use the patterns to make realistic music that sounds exactly like that artist. And I'm getting my information from One Zero, who did a story and a trend on Twitter about this. And I guess someone did this with Jay-Z and they posted it to SoundCloud. And then Jay-Z's people had it removed because it sounded so much like Jay-Z, even though it wasn't. It was just it was just a computer in reality. Uh, and there aren't really laws around any of this yet because it's just coming out now. So we are going to have to see what the changes are um, in, re in response to deep fake music becoming more popular and what this means for artists alike. Okay, and then up next, I'm going to talk about a <laughs> five-year-old boy who had his heart set on buying a Lamborghini with $3. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Hi again, I just talked about a man who tried to live out a fairy tale on an abandoned island at Disney World, and then I talked about Elon Musk's new baby, X Ash Archangel 12, or however you pronounce it, and all the funny memes that have been born because of it. Uh, a little five-year-old boy was pulled over by Utah Highway Patrol after stealing his parents' car in an attempt to drive all the way to California to buy a Lamborghini with $3 in his pocket. Wowee, isn't that something? The officer who pulled the boy over originally thought he was pulling over a driver under the influence because the kid was swerving in and out of lanes going about 30 miles per hour. And the parents were at work, and the boy was in the care of his 16-year-old sister, and he managed to slip out without her knowledge and was gone for about 30 minutes. 
The family says the boy knows he did something wrong and he broke down crying when he saw his family again. They have no idea how he knew how to turn on and operate a car, being that he's five years old. But they said he used to have a little kitty electric car when he was younger and could even reverse it with one hand. Nevertheless, a local businessman stepped in and offered the five-year-old to um, ride along in a real Lamborghini. His face lit up with joy, and he had a really good time in the car, but he's now grounded as punishment, and he's learned his lesson, and his parents have also added more chores to his list as well. Okay, next topic is Selena Gomez. She's going to be starring in a new quarantine cooking show on HBO Max. It's going to be a 10-episode series and doesn't yet have a title. It's going to be her in self-isolation trying new recipes, and she's going to have a different expert chef joining her remotely on each episode. And Gomez said, quote, I've always been very vocal about my love of food. I think I've been asked hundreds of times in interviews, if I had another career, what would I do? And I've answered that it would be fun to be a chef. I definitely don't have the formal training, though. Like many of us, while being home, I find myself cooking more and experimenting in the kitchen, end quote. And during each episode, a different food-related charity will be highlighted, so that's awesome. Uh, and HBO Max, I've never even heard of it, but I guess it's because it hasn't launched yet. It's launching May 27th and will be $14.99 a month. And this is getting real tedious with the amount of streaming services nowadays. I can't take it anymore. It seems like there's a new one every two months. So if you want to watch Selena Gomez cook, then you're going to have to shell out another 15 bucks a month for freaking HBO Max. And if you just started out cooking because of coronavirus or you're finding yourself getting sick of the only three things you know how to make, uh, then Elemental has your back. You can find them on Twitter, at Elemental. And they put out six expert tips to make you a better home cook. So here they are. One, be honest. You know what you and your family likes, so don't try too hard to adventure because things will just sit there unused. Number two, know that there's food in the house even if you think there isn't. You can make do with what you have a lot more than you would think. Number three, focus on basics. Don't try to master something super hard. Instead, become the master of a skill you can use for life, like tender beans, fluffy steamed rice, or perfectly poached eggs, and then you can move on to the harder stuff. Number four, make what you have last. Number five, don't overlook your leftovers. Think about revamping them, reimagining them. And finally, number six, lean into comfort. Whatever food reminds you of good times and comforts, make it, and make it often, especially right now. Uh, Okay, guys, that's all for tonight. Remember to take care of your mind in a time like this. Take a break from the online content. Find a rhythm that works for you. Thank you for listening to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Once again, I am your host, Kayla Moeller, and if you could do me a favor, subscribe to the show or write a little review, that would really help me out. And don't forget to find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful night. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.